Hey y'all, all right. Today I'm working on my daughter's charger again. It's time doing front brakes. Already got this wheel done. So this is a, what year is this thing? 2019? It's a 20. So this is a 2020 Dodge Charger. <sighs> All right, let's see. I need to get my seat, my bucket, get over here, and I'll start taking that apart. But first, I want to say thank you to you all that have subscribed, shared, liked, done all that stuff. You know, the thumbs ups and all of that sort of stuff. I tremendously appreciate it. <clears throat> really, I do, because the channel is now over. It's like almost 1740 subscribers which is amazing it just like, blows my mind absolutely blows my mind i know i say that all the time but it's just really something to me so okay now what you're looking at here very uh standard stuff nothing really exotic or hard or difficult here okay um, I've outlined disc brakes, do, doing uh, replacing pads and rotors on a lot of these vehicles like this before. Very similar, very straightforward. So we'll go ahead and get to work here. Okay. Um, these pads aren't worn down real bad. The rotors aren't real bad either. Honestly, you could take them and uh, have them true, uh, trued, have them turned. <laughs> Have them turn somewhere and true them up but uh, my daughter just went ahead and bought brand new ones so anyway all right let's get let's get started taking it all apart um, let's get you all where you can see really well well first of all these bolts have to come loose there's two of them there's one down here my fingers pointing at it right there then there's one here 13 millimeter head And something that will be useful is this. You'll have to hold this thing down. That is the, uh, it looks like a bolt, but it isn't. It is the guide pin, okay? This caliper slides back and forth on these guide pins, okay? Because it has like one piston over here and it pushes against the, the rotor and then pinches and then that shoves the caliper and centers it due to these guide pins these guide pins float inside here okay and i'll show you all of that i'll take it all apart and show everything to you but anyway let's get started i'm going to turn the wheel this way towards me well actually away from me but the caliper towards me so okay now what i do I'll go now. Oh, sorry, wrong way. Might help if I go the right way. Let's see. Let's see, let's do it like this. Okay, broke loose a little bit. You can use a wrench on them if you want to. I just use some pliers. It's up to you. Once you get that broke loose, you'll find out. This has got some kind of thread locker on the threads. You'll have to work a little ways little bit to pipe through that and once you get through it it's they come right apart and it fooled me thinking the bolt was ready to come out okay there we go 
go. Do the same thing up here on the top end. Right there. And let's see, bend that up. You can see. Alright, so. hear that kind of screeching like noise that's that's the uh, bolt breaking loose okay I'm gonna stop here just a minute I'm gonna compress the piston into the caliper I'm just gonna use a large screwdriver just to push on the piston just a little bit in that caliper. So there we go, that's done. Now I'm taking the bolt loose. Good old thread locker. Yay. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Now, this should come right on off there. Yep, just like that. You'll notice that the pads have done that. You know, they spread apart. These clips, you'll need to retain these clips. I'm using the Wagner brake pads. The clips they sent are just a little bit different. I can use them but they don't have this feature of forcing the pads back apart like that. See, see, see how that works? See, that's these clips. So you'll need to retain these clips if you're using Wagner brake pads. See mine, see, watch. And, see, I'll show you when I get it all apart. Really straightforward. Okay, now, the caliper bracket You'll need to take that off. There's one, two bolts, one there and one there. They're 21 millimeter. They're pretty difficult. So I'm gonna pause this. Um, I'll let you see a little bit of it, okay? I'll take, the, I'll break the top one loose. Okay, well, let me show you what else. This, bracket this bracket right here this gets in the way of the socket getting on this this bolt so I have to do a little prying on that bracket just a little bit just to get it out of the way enough so I can get a socket on there it's really kind of crazy it's probably one of those assembly line things you know she's my daughter's complaining that the pads are or that uh, brakes, she's having some shuttering done when <sighs> she's using the brakes on this. And they're creating a lot of dust. So, of course she wants somebody else to look good or anything like that. And I understand. So. Okay, I'm using a flex head ratchet with a 21 millimeter socket, half inch drive. Alright, now the rest of this is kind of boring. And I'm just going to get these bolts out for the caliper brackets, these two, and get them out. Once they're out, I'll get this bracket off. Get the rotor off and get the pads out. And start cleaning stuff up. And I'll show you a little bit more in just a minute. Okay, y'all. As you can see, I got the caliper bracket off. There's the pads. Here's the rotor. It just slides right off. 
I'm going to clean up the, uh, I'm going to press this piston a little bit further into the bore and I'm going to clean up these, surface, these surfaces here and here where the pads meet up. I've got some uh, anti-squeal material on the new pads going in, so these will get on off of here. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take them over to the workbench or something. Oh, those bolts that are the holes this bracket on, the caliper bracket, they have a lot of thread lockers, so they are a real monster to get off. Okay. All right. Okay. Just come right over here to my outdoor workbench. Pretty small. Good grief. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So let's one more focus on this. Okay. I'll show you what's so great about these clips. You just push the pads out. You don't push them inside, you push them out away from each other. Because these clips have that nice little feature right there. Okay? What they do is the pad goes up against that. Okay? When you're applying the brakes and when you release the brakes, it kind of pushes the pads away from the rotor just a little bit. Which is kind of nice, really, because then you don't have to worry so much about the pads just sitting there grinding and riding away and getting chewed up. Actually, really nice. Okay. All right, these guide pins, I'll show you. Here's what they do they just go in there they just sit in there they do not bolt to this they they're they just glide back and forth they're just floating now if you can pull them out like that and they go back that's good these do that so a lot of folks and i've done this before is just be like oh, okay they're good enough to go all right and some people would do that today i'm not going to do that today I'm going to pull them completely out. You just pull them straight out, just like that. No big deal. And when they go in, uh, same thing. And they do not have a special, both of them are pretty much the same animal. So there's no big deal there. I'll just wipe those off and clean them off. It's not a big deal. Okay. Next, I want to clean up the caliper. some in there to clean out some of the old grease in the okay. surface there where the that clip is gonna go into I want to have it clean I want to have it as rust free as I can Okay. Alright, that's done. Now I'm going to spray them here just a little bit more. Okay. Alright. I'm going to clean up these little guide. These little guide clips too. Let's set this over here on the tailgate. Let's 
So. All right. Uh, yeah. Little guide clips. It's just really simple. I just clamp them down here in the vise just a little bit. Not a big deal. Just like that. Our brush. A little bit of brake part cleaner. That's work. Just want to get the old brake dust off. And any kind of corrosion, dirt, anything that could be on them. Uh, spray them off once you're done brushing on them. Okay. They'll look something like that. Okay, so they started out like this one, now it looks like this one. Okay, so next one, do the same thing. This upper portion here, right here, this does not matter. Okay, you can clean it if you want to, but it's not really necessary because nothing rides there. No part of the brake pad actually rides there, so it doesn't really make that much difference. These here aren't real bad, dirty, or rotten, or worn out, or anything damaged, so reusing them is actually a very good idea. Majority of the brake dust off, any kind of corrosion that could be, you know, basically taking up space and pushing the pad. And basically, we don't want to bind up the brake pad as it travels back and forth. We want it to be free moving. That's what cleaning all this stuff up does. Helps to ensure that. Okay, that part's done. We clean clean these guide pins and start lubricating. Put the clips back in. Start lubricating stuff, getting all of that ready. Whoops. Take you over here, show you what to do. Okay. All right, so I'm using the Duralast rotors and I'm using these Wagner Thermoplot pads. I've used Wagner pads plenty of times before. They always work out really well for me. It's up to you. You can do whatever you like choose whatever brand that suits your fancy suits your fancy okay see wipe it off and nice and clean set that right there i've got one of the old rotor boxes okay. clean the other one up oops missed a little bit there on the end there we go hey look at there okay nice and clean all right, no big deal. Now, all right. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. It's a good idea to run you some brake parts cleaner through there to get rid of some of that excess thread locker. Okay, which is, that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so you don't have to go and chase the threads or anything like that. You just spray some brake parts cleaner in there. I like using uh, the CRC, yeah, CRC brake clean in the red can. It's up to you. You choose whatever you like. I've used plenty of other brands before, and they all do really well. So most all of them do really well. The CRC in the red can it doesn't dry instantaneously, and I kind of like that because it just it's uh, it's not so hard have the air around you because let's just be honest you will breathe some of that stuff in from time to time and it's it's never pleasant but you know regardless it's never pleasant but at least at least with this the stuff in the red can it's not so so harsh okay rotors come wrapped up in that plastic that i just unwrapped this one from I'm going to spray it off just to make sure there's no grease, any sort of greases or anything like that on the rotor. So, just 
and I'm holding the rotor in the center hole there for, for it to go up on the hub, the bearing hub. There we go. Just give it a little spritz, a little spray down. There we go. All done. All done. There we are. Nice and clean. Now I'm going to clean up the hub on the cow on, over there, which I should have done that first, but hey, sue me. Okay. Now, anytime you touch the rotor, though, you want to make sure you want to clean it as well as you can to get any sort of oil or grease or anything like that on off the rotor. Just ensures, the, you know, nice, good breaking break in for the rotor that pads, new pads. So let me clean up that rotor or hub real quick. I'll just show you what to do. It's nothing real fancy. Oh, need the brushes. It's just nothing real fancy. Just a regular old wire brush. That's all you need. And then we come over here. And then we'll take spritz that down. Trying to clean that the center piece up so it allows the uh, rotor to sit on there more evenly with less problems. So we'll see. See all the crap down there on that router that came off of this. A lot of rust, dirt, corrosion, everything like that. So there we go. Oh, I gotta clean up the cow. I almost forgot I gotta clean up the caliper. Alright, so I'll go ahead and do that while I'm here. Again, just a little. I'm not gonna be painting the caliper. These are aluminum calipers. Just thought I'd throw that in there. No big deal. But I'm just gonna clean them up. I should have done this first before I did this, but hey, I can spritz this off again. So I'm gonna have to set the camera down. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, y'all, got caliper cleaned up, and I got the hub cleaned up, got the new rotor on, so it's ready for action. Please do be careful with this, the heat shield. It's just sheet metal, so if you bend it, try to bend it back out of the way of the rotor. Because if you don't, the rotor could be rubbing against that and causing a lot of noise. Oh, and I cleaned my bolts off for the caliper bracket. So, I don't have a torque spec for none of this stuff either, so I don't have a book for, the, for this car. So, I'm just having to wing it, but I'm getting Get stuff really tight and it should be okay now so what we're going to do now is going to put the caliper bracket back together reload it with the retainer clips put a little of this um, Permatex Ceramic Extreme Brake Parts Cleaners, or Brake Parts Lubricant, I'm sorry, Brake Parts Lubricant. So, yeah, it is perfect. So, basically, we're just going to put a little bit right there. A little bit. Basically, the shiny places where the old pads were rubbing is basically what I'm where I'm applying lubricant at. Okay. So there we go, there's that's done. 
Now I'm going to lubricate the guide pins, put the guide pins in the bracket, have them ready to go. So first I'm going to take, I'm going to load this little rubber boot and put some of this lubricant in that rubber boot. In. Put some lubricant on it. A little more lubricant down in there. Lots of times, you know, I'll just add to what's already in there. I've done that before too. And it's just this is my daughter's car by the way so I'm trying to do a pretty good job on it you know This boot, I had to let some of the air out to get trapped in there. So, so there we go. All right. Now on to the pads. Now, um, here's the pads. I've got this. They do not come like this. I put this on there. I'll show you what that is. But first, I'm going to load pad in there it goes in just like how the other ones came out there we go you have to sometimes you have to be a little use a little finesse a little force you don't want to get too crazy using the force though see like so okay now, what is that red stuff? All right, let's disc brake quiet. Okay, here it is. It's my CRC. I do not do brakes without something like this. Okay, whether it's by CRC or somebody else, I use something like this. Now, here's the thing. I put about three coats of this on the back of the brake pads. As you saw on that one, these pads over here, three coats, and this stuff stays sticky for a very, very long time. It does not go away or dry out or whatever. It stays tacky and sticky for years and years and years and years. So, like there's some over there on that table right now, and I can probably go back to that table if it's covered up, not covered with dirt or dust, and it'll still be sticky or tacky. So, this stuff really is serious. It really does work. I don't do brakes without them. It's just, they're just that good. It's just that good of stuff. Now, sometimes you have that stuff to squeeze out of a tube. That's pretty good, too. Uh, I think CRC makes that, too. But, anyway, not a commercial for them. I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I'm just passing this along to you all. But this keeps the pads from moving around and oscillating and creating noise when you, when you hit your brakes. When somebody hits their brakes and you hear noise, Lots of times that's either the pads are glazing or these pads on the back side are oscillating, moving around. And that's what happens. So, anyway. Now, this is done, ready to go on. So, here we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to sit you all down here and try to capture what I'm doing.
really just trying to start threads now. Okay. All right. Got it started. Got the bolt started. I'm going to run it down. Get that part done. Be right back in just a minute. Okay, y'all. Got the bolts tightened down back here. And they're all done. Yeah. Those are torqued down. Nice. Like I said before, I don't have any torque specs, so I'm just going off a of feel. I know. Not the best situation, but it's all I got. So anyway, just love the caliper on here. You may have to push the pads together, especially after you uh, compress the piston further into the caliper. Those, like I said before, those clips, they push the pads out. So, okay. Now, basically everything is reverse of what... Yeah, we're just reversing what we did earlier. Caliper retainer bolts. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten them down and this job is done. So, oh, a uh, couple more very important bits and pieces. Remember, these are compressed now. So before you move the car, even just the least little bit, Pump the brake pedal several times before you move the car. If you don't, you could accidentally have a wreck, you know, back into something. It is really scary, and it's something if you don't remember.